What I normally study uh, is methane in the ocean. The Deepwater Horizon incident in 2010 was, in a sense, uh, a, a natural laboratory for us. It provided a situation that gave us the ability to study a system that we would never have been given funding to study. What happens when a large release of methane is emitted to the ocean? Where does it go? What is its ultimate fate? We were able to measure the total mass uh, uh, of hydrocarbons, of oil and gas that was respired in the deep waters of the Gulf of Mexico and how that changed with time. That gives us an estimate of the rates of bulk oil and gas uh, biodegradation. Our research indicates that approximately 200,000 tons of oil and gas hydrocarbons had been removed by microorganisms by September 2010. What we saw was that two to three months after the beginning of this disaster in 2010, those deep waters of the Gulf of Mexico started to see a sharp increase in the rates of total oil and gas consumption. By four months into the disaster, those rates had passed their peak and were already starting to decline as they became oil and gas limited, as they basically ate themselves out of house and home uh, in the deep waters of the Gulf of Mexico. Quantifying the rates of consumption by microorganisms gives us some of the fundamental knowledge that's able to translate what we've learned from this disaster potentially then to other disasters that might occur, to other oil spills at other areas of the planet. We're looking at some of the fundamental capacities of these microorganisms to consume released oil and released natural gas. And this gives us an idea that of the amount of time then that it will take in certain areas of the world's ocean to um, uh, remove any released hydrocarbons. Interestingly enough, we noticed that when our rates of consumption increased most dramatically, it's correlated with the time periods where they're most aggressively injecting dispersants at the wellhead. Now, while there is much more research to be done, to quantify the effectiveness and the appropriateness of using dispersants in a natural ecosystem, at least to a first approximation, our uh, results indicate that there is a correlation between the rates of biodegradation of chemicals, uh, of oil and gas in the deep waters of the Gulf of Mexico with the addition of dispersants. A production of the University of Rochester. Please visit us online and subscribe to our channel for more videos.